And now it's time for everyone's favorite funeral home, Return to Nature. They're back. And uh, the uh, owners of Return to Nature Funeral Home, this is the one in Colorado that had bodies, hundreds of them, literally stacked on the walls and on like old Kmart shelves and shit. John and Carrie Holford, well, they're facing new federal charges after a grand jury indictment revealed extensive misuse of COVID-19 relief funds and severe mishandling of bodies dating back to at least 2019. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office press release, the Hallfords are accused of engaging in fraudulent activities by lying about their financial and legal status to obtain over $880,000 in federal aid. The indictment unsealed Monday... Can I ask you a question about this? Yeah. So what does a funeral home need COVID relief funds for? People were dying. Well, maybe you I mean, need more. This, yeah, this was for, yeah, I see what you're saying. This was for restaurants and places that had to close. Well, these people should have been like, Woo-hoo! well, and, and the reality of it, though, is like 70 percent of the funds that were given out were fraudulent. It, it was the biggest misuse of federal funds like in history. And it was just like all kind of brushed under the rug. Like, oh, whoops, we gave up billions of dollars for no reason. And we, I, I, I'm kind of, I look back and I'm like, I should have applied for some. Why not? I didn't. But it's just, they were just kind of handing it out left and right to anybody who asked for it. And I thought, I don't need it. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this. Uh, but now just seeing like, all you yeah. had to do is just basically apply and you get a large check. Like, well, maybe I should have done that because everyone else did. And it's not like, and most of these are never going to be prosecuted or looked at or even considered because if you, I mean, if you didn't even really need it, you could have gotten it. People, uh, and, and that's just how it worked. But people like really went overboard on it because there was like no oversight. I compare it to like an early nineties, um, our early 2000s or late 1990s, like internet poll before we had cookies on our computer that you could vote once and done. Back then you just kept clicking yeah. over and over, vote, 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 vote. Like that's kind of how this worked. You could just keep applying over and over and we'll just keep sending you more checks. And there was no oversight to it at all. It's, I mean, it's, it's baffling. Uh, and, and yet it's like, well, that's just There were some businesses though that, oh, that applied yeah. for it because they desperately needed it and yes. they didn't abuse it but it, to me i this should have been flagged it should i mean these people should have been like well well and uh, had they not been the, stacking the rooftops with people had they not been stacking bodies they probably would have never been like even examined for the covid-19 relief funds quite honestly uh, the right. indictment unsealed Monday in Colorado District Court brings to light shocking allegations against the Holfords, including giving bereaved families dry concrete instead of their loved ones' ashes and burying the wrong bodies on multiple occasions. Jesus. They uh, reportedly collected... Well, this over, is new information. Yeah. They reportedly collected over $130,000 from families for services they never provided, such as cremations and burials. These new federal charges underscore the severity of the Holfords' alleged crimes and their blatant disregard for both legal standards and basic human decency, stated in the press release from the U.S. Attorney's Office, District of Colorado. The charges come atop hundreds of state felony charges they already face, including corpse abuse, theft, money laundering, and forgery. The investigation of the Hawford's operations began in October of 2023 after neighbors reported a foul odor emitting from the funeral home, which John Holford initially claimed was related to his taxidermy activities. That's all it is. I'm, I'm stuffing squirrels over here. Never mind the leaking bodily fluids coming out of the windows and the doors and all of that. However, the uh, smell was later linked to the improperly stored decaying bodies. The situation at the funeral yeah, home yeah, was appalling and a grievous affront to the community and the families who trusted the Holfords with their loved ones' final rights, said the investigator associated with the case. Furthermore, an environmental protection agency, uh, the or the EPA, has determined that the uh, funeral home building contaminated with various biohazards due to the decaying bodies cannot be repurposed. A scheduled demolition is underway right now and is expected to last for about 10 days. If uh, convicted on federal charges, the Holfords could face up to $250,000 in fines and 20 years in prison. 
The case has deeply affected the Colorado Springs community, particularly the families involved, many of whom have initiated lawsuits against Return to Nature Funeral Home. This has been an ongoing nightmare for all of us, said one family member who preferred to remain anonymous, knowing that there might be justice brings some solace, but it doesn't undo the pain. My God. Uh, what's the, I, yeah, I, I totally get it. I don't think, I, I think it'd be a waste of energy and dollars to even sue these people. They're not going to have any money uh, at the end of the day. Uh, and they've already, they're getting what they deserve. I mean, they, they honestly, I think they should go away forever, not just 20 years. Um, I don't know. I think an appropriate, yeah. uh, <laughs> if uh, it was if it were Tony land and uh, everything was judged by me, I would just put them in caskets alive and bury them. And say, hmm, okay, have oh, fun, bye <laughs> bye. Okay, dude, that's that's not how our country works. Um, but what I want to know is they. So we're talking. Let's see. There's one hundred thirty thousand dollars that they collected from families that it was never used for the purpose it was intended, and then eight hundred eighty thousand dollars in federal aid, COVID nineteen relief funds. So there's about a million dollars, give or take a couple thou here and there, yeah. of money. Is it in assets that they could liquidate and maybe give to some of these families? Well, I mean, where did this money go? Well, is they, it up their nose if, or is it like a well, yacht somewhere? Uh, well, if they have the $880,000 in federal aid, guess who's getting that back? The government. Uh, that's not going to be going wow. out to families. They're going to go, you lied to us. We're going to seize all of that. So that's just going to go back to them. So whatever they have left, um, you're not going to get your loved ones back. You're not going to get them, you know unstuck from the Kmart shelves that they were found on. Hopefully they can identify the remains and you can bury them properly. But I just feel like it's a losing battle to sue them because you're not going to get anything out of it. I mean, look, they've already been well, caught. Let's, let's talk about the wrong bodies being buried. God. Um, You'd have to exhume like them. Like I said yeah. earlier, yeah, that's new information. So do we need to exhume a whole bunch of bodies that were buried by this funeral home and go, is this the right one? I'd be looking at every single one. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah. It's uh, a it, lot. It's amazing what uh, what two people can do who are uh, running a funeral home and have zero ethics at all. It's, I, I, I just, I, I don't, I don't understand these two. I mean, th I mean, that's the, the statement of the day with half of the cases we cover. It's like, how, how are, how is your mind working this way that makes you capable of doing this sort of shit to other human beings and just being like, well, and another. Uh, let's go out to Chi Chi's tonight for dinner, honey. And, uh, have a little fried ice cream for dessert as we discuss, uh, the, uh, 42 bodies that we just stacked up on the extra shelves oh, down the way, you know? But here's here's this is the prime example that should be lifted up when people say government oversight. It's too much. It's too much. I agree. A lot of times it is. But in this case, it's in the wrong areas. Government was not. Yeah, this is lift this one up as, OK, well, here's the exact opposite of too much government. This was not enough. There was no regulation of these funeral homes. These people were I don't think they were licensed. And and this there wasn't is what a requirement. can go on. And yeah, yeah. I it's just but hasn't ridiculous this, this what has, happens. This has sparked change in Colorado though, because I believe there are new yes. licensing laws and such because of this incident. Yep. Now it's kind of crazy that it took till 2024 to say go, maybe we should regulate the funeral industry in the state of Colorado. Just maybe. Yeah, maybe. you think? 2024 is how long it took us to do this. So God knows how much else had been going on for the last however many hundred years uh, in Colorado that, you know, that didn't mm -hmm. get caught, that, that did fly under the... I mean, this was pretty obvious of what their shit was. But if you just kind of did this shit a little bit more under the radar, a little bit more, uh, you know not obvious like stacking 200 bodies in your building it's kept giving out fucking quick crate and getting rid of the bodies you could have done that forever i i'd imagine there's a lot of quick crate in urns at people's homes in colorado that are none the wiser and that's just trauma 
baptizing. We also know of another funeral home that we talked about where there was a body sitting in a hearse for what, six or eight months. Yeah. So again, Colorado had a problem and yeah, they're addressing it, but a little too late, a little bit too late. I, uh, I think there's a lot of people in Colorado that are probably looking at aunt Edna's urn going, if we add a little bit of water here, Hmm. Oh, look, I can, I can, I can build something with it. That's not what ashes normally do. No, but when you need a little extra quick nope. crate for the project, just, you know, look to the urn. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.